um, you know, afterburner series of uh, whole shots from the Battle Exos. And today we have uh, uh, Vishal from Oixa. Wow, we got uh, Excess Overland. This is one of the best stickers we have in my car as well. So, uh, welcome Vishal and, uh, you know, Marshall is with us. So, tell us about your Excess uh, Overland. I mean, what are you doing? Hi, Marshall. Love you guys. Hope you guys are keeping safe uh, during these times. Yeah. Um, so, coming back to your question. Okay. Exit Overland is all about um, modifying vehicles to customer needs. Anyone who's into overlanding or off-roading or does a, you know, a part-time off-roader over the weekend or somebody is into hardcore traveling across countries and uh, across various terrains. So we try and modify those vehicles, make it more practical, more utility oriented. Um, that's that's main, one of our main goals. We want something that people will actually use and would love to use it wherever they can, wherever they want to, and wherever they want to take it to. You know, so that's mainly what our idea was behind Excess Overland. You know, and along with that, we did a bit of uh, biking products as well, where people were that way into touring. So we did all our oil and fields. Of course, where we were partners with uh, Barrel Exhaust, uh, selling the exhaust systems for all the oil and field guys. And then um, from Triumph to Ducatis to various bikes that we were basically accessorizing, not modifying as such, but accessorizing for, for better touring experience, for better riding experience, you know. So when did this all start, uh, Vishal? I mean, like, um, <clears throat> I mean, I'm not talking just about Exos Overland. When did this everything happen to you? How did you get into this? Uh, over, over uh, the whole automotive scene? Yeah. yeah so like basically, the, uh, the journey before the Exos Exos Overland, yeah. Yeah. Basically, I was I was actually born born in the Middle East. I was born in UAE. My dad is an auto buff, an auto enthusiast. He's gone slow over the years, but he was still one reckless driver in his days. <laughs> so that's where I picked it up from. You know, so we would go to the sand dunes. We would he, he had sports cars back in the days, the Toyota Silly cars in the 70s. So I was born into a, a family that was into cars, you know. So that's where the whole passion started off with. And over the years, it kept building and building. And um, it was a hobby for quite some time. And then uh, we migrated, my parents and our family migrated to Africa. And that's where the entire ball changed because I turned 19 by then. So I had my driver's license. I officially could drive or ride. Um, so that's where the entire passion took a turn. I bought my cars. I started, well, we were on, we were on um, you know, pocket monies. So our first idea was to take a home music system, put it into the vehicle, and you know, have a boombox in the car, and that's how it started. Then we realized, well, we needed more performance. So bit by bit, slowly over the years, it turned into a serious passion. And uh, working, working in an IT field, um, you 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 could connect with a lot of people with the same kind of passion and interest. Uh, most of the cases, most of the time, that's what you face, you know, in the industry. Yeah. So that's how, that's how the entire pattern of overlanding came. Africa played a vital role in, in getting into off-roading and overlanding because that's the culture there. I mean, we call it the bush culture over there, where weekends and every every quarterly, we have, I mean, every once in three months, we had a long weekend. That That's how it was in Africa. So every long weekend we had, we would either have a camping trip or an overlanding trip into the bush or a game reserve. And that's how the passion built up. That's how, I mean, when I first got into four by fours, I had no idea what the other stick, the four by four stick meant, you know? So I thought the bigger wheels, more, more ground clearance, we are good to go. And I ended up um, staying in the bush for two nights because I didn't know how to engage the four by four until somebody rescued me out. So that, that's how it all started. We all, we had no idea what we were doing, you know? So just buying an SUV didn't do the trick. So then I was, uh, and it, it's not a, it's not an Indian uh, in in Africa at least it was not an Indian um, uh, loved entertainment or loved passion. You know, off-roading was never that something that the Indians could relate to. It was a very very much a, a white man sport sort of a thing, a white man pleasure time. You know, mm -hmm. so it was it was difficult. And then you know, I met a few people, a few few white people, and they were like. You know, uh, we don't see Indians doing off-roading or overlanding. So maybe this is not your cup of tea. And uh, somewhere down the line, the ego hits you. So like, no, I need to learn this. Because that's how it all started. So I started, I was 19, 20 when I got into it and slowly understood it. Got stuck a number of times. The car went 
buggered a number of times. So over the weekend, because money was tight, so over the weekend I would fix my own cars, work on my own cars, slowly learn from the specialist, ask my friends who are mechanics, what could be done, what can't be done, you know. And slowly internet played a vital role. You get to learn from it quite a bit and you work on your vehicles on your own and that's how it all went on. 2010, I decided to move to India uh, to marry my current wife, you know, and I decided to stay back in India. I never decided to go back. Um, so I bought my first car in 2010 and um, decided to do it up the people. I mean, everyone does it up in Africa. So I thought my wife well, might as well do something up over here, which is according to my needs and what I want to, you know, use it for, you know, so I'll make it a little more comfortable, make it a little more rugged so I can hit terrains, even if it's if I hit a boulder or something, you know. Which car was that? So, the Mahindra Thar. Thar, okay. Thar. Right. Yeah. So that's what I bought and then I slowly did it up. A uh, couple of my friends saw it and they liked it. So they, they bought their Thars. They said, you know what, let's, I want to do it similar. So help them with that. Eventually, it turned out to be a business because I did so many of my friends' vehicles. So the other people that started seeing it, they were like, no, you know, you can build mine as well. So that's how we got into, I actually got into building cars, you know, and building four by fours, basically. You know, and then I said, you know what, why not? This seems like a good idea. You know, I, I, there's something that's my passion and, and it makes sense. If I can turn a profession or make some money out of my passion, why not? You know, so that's how it all started. So before Exus, I set up a new a firm. Uh, we were building basic small four by fours here and there. Uh, nothing major, nothing major, but small bits and pieces. We were doing it. We got some good builds in the hand in the meantime. And uh, then the whole Exus idea flourished. Um, but Vishal, and, before you, I mean, yeah. right now I know uh, we all know that you know Excess Overland is like a humongous garage. I mean, like a, a thing you 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 know innovative design with those uh, containers and stuff like that. But before yes. that, I I know I I uh, I think I know about the, what you've told me a little bit that um, your work location was a small uh, garage and then you hardly had people helping you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Uh, had pay uh, problems paying them sometimes no no way laborers you had to do pitch in and do the work and all these things can you just tell me about that i mean that was like really inspiring of how much you actually pushed yourself there before you got here oh that was interesting uh, because uh, ahmedabad is actually a very hot place first of all right so we were in an industrial area with fans that don't work i mean they really don't work <laughs> Where we used to be based was a completely uh, truckers area where all logistics under because that's the cheapest rent I could find to start this, right? So it was dusty, it was hot, and we had no staff. Uh -huh. It was one helper and myself, and we would do bills ourselves. We had no tools, right? Uh, so I would go beg, borrow, you know, all the tools from all the neighboring workshops. I said, "Can I borrow this? And can I borrow that?" And that, that's how it all started. Once we built our first vehicle, mm -hmm. it's only then sunk in, you know what, we did a good job. Okay. And only then we thought, you know, like, okay, this, this is interesting. This is satisfying because the customer was happy. So more than the money factor at that point, it was, you know, we built this, yeah. you know. Right. So and we built this and a lot of, he, he kept telling us, you know, what, a lot of people asking me, you know, who's done the job on this. So that's what gave us the encouragement. And... Um, even though times were tough at that time, I mean, I survived on Parleji and Chai for most of the days, you know, because uh, four by four in Gujarat was it, just the, you know, it was a baby in the beginning, you know, they thought many people were into modifying and serious modification. So right. people bought cars and Jeeps for the, you know, the macho look, the old school macho look, the whole dream of having a Jeep, but nobody took it as off-roading as a serious hobby. So, and I, that was what my forte was. I could only build something that was meant for the purpose. I couldn't do flashy work, you know. Right. So customers no were difficult to come by, you know. So any customer we got, whatever the condition, and because we had no customers, there was no income. So half the time we would sit and, uh, you know, um, make sure our chai wala would keep supplying us on credit for most of the time. <laughs> you know? Marshall, so he would Marshall and I have my... this, uh, uh, when you talked about this chai and uh, parliji, I think uh, when we started, uh, when we were us in the very early stage, when we didn't even have an office, um, the car was our office. And then, and then there are a lot of times where we skipped lunch. We just had tea and cigarettes and tea and cigarettes. And, you know, we, we skipped lunch so that we can actually, you know, have dinner directly. We we're waiting for customers, waiting for orders, one or two orders per day. And that was like, Marshall, I hope you remember those, the, those yeah. you know, days, right? We, 
we would uh, we would choose a garage uh, such that it is closer to a bakery so that we can have uh, i mean or we can uh, afford uh, or, or uh, get them to facilitate i mean our, our, our customers have to be treated also right so along with them we would buy teas and coffees and chais all that and then uh, get their bike simultaneously uh, uh, fitted with all the accessories or the exhaust and everything and then that's how we would have the thing going on till, till uh, and and the stocks would be in a giri's uh, i10 uh, booth <laughs> that was the that was the office <laughs> yeah we could yeah, i can i can totally relate to that i can totally relate to that so that's how it was you know yeah. customers were hard to come by because um, it was difficult it was beginning not many people were buying cars at that time and gujarat is generally you know it's about 2 years behind the trend in india you know so you have bought it you have got access to internet and you know what the rest of india is doing doesn't mean gujarat is on the same platform gujarat oh. takes a bit of time you know <laughs> so so here we are expecting you know oh, we going to get bills here that nothing's coming you know month ends coming there's there's one guy that i need to pay i couldn't pay him it was just difficult pay him okay either i pay the rent or i pay the home rent you know so it was just difficult it was just difficult for quite some time although i had a thought but putting in diesel into the car was also difficult you know right. so many a times i couldn't go off roading because you know i mean you keep breaking when you off road you know it's, it's a sport it's a little expensive sport as well so you yeah. worried you know if you break something you know you get big set so, so it was it was difficult it was a good cycle but it was one of the best times in my life i mean that right. place in our industrial area i've had amazing memories with amazing friends that helped me with customers that help to promote me or just came to you know just ask how are you doing you know it wasn't about you know um, what can we do or anything just just the whole idea of what are you doing and how are you doing are you are you fine you know that was enough you know that was enough oh i saw one of your belts on the road it looked nice that's it we don't need money do that made our day you know the ego was that hunger for the ego actually was satisfied man you know <laughs> Yeah. the only time where we felt bad was um, there was one build that i was working on it was a mahindra getaway build um, it was a proper nice good build a uh, customer a very influential guy in gujarat he he called me i had a good chat with him so on phone everything was rosy he was supposed to drop his vehicle um, the build was finalized it was going to be one of at that moment at that time in my phase in life that would have been the best build ever you know and uh, the moment he came to the the workshop he looked at the workshop he looked at me and he said and he actually had come with a vehicle he came with two vehicles that means he came to drop his vehicle drop one vehicle yeah. ready but the moment he saw the place he actually got scared you know i bought a 11 lakh rupee um, brand new vehicle i'm going to give it to him and he's going to be pumping he's going to be he was spending about 5 6 lakhs at that time you know people would be scared you know so he looked at the place he wasn't very sure and he decided never to give me that vehicle that was a big blow you know that is what actually resulted in nexus overland coming up you know we it because um, sometimes it's difficult uh, to explain people without having the right setup that you could do a good job it it gets the, so sometimes it's what's visible you know what's seen sells you know something along those lines you know so jo dikhta hai wo bikta hai types you know so that's where the whole concept and the idea of excess oval and actually came into picture you know but but a lot of people don't go by a lot of people don't go by uh, that you shouldn't judge a book by its cover right so uh, a, a lot of presentation comes into picture there definitely yes it's all packaging and presentation in today's day and age so right. that you need a bit of that until you've made a name for yourself i guess once you've made a name then you know it's it's how the rich people uh, they entire their life when they are struggling you know they're not so happy but the moment they attain the level that they want to attain they then then they call the humble human being because now you know they're very simple because they've attained you know that so something along those lines you know once you made your name then everything is fine you know then you can go down to any level and it's, it's like accepted you know so sad sad uh, of life you you told us just uh, just told us a story that uh, somebody came and uh, looking at your garage they were not confident enough to drop a car and go but then uh, from there uh what is so uh, you know happy to know about is um you you actually did a lot of uh, um you know um uh, you remember the the, the safari by uh, uh, did you, you did yeah so yes we did 
from a, from somebody who is not able you know, not even able to trust you looking at your place and um, from there your journey to in dropping off uh, their uh, uh, you know work for you is really amazing uh, you know which was your best project so far like best pro and i see mostly you keep doing isuzu's um, you know and not uh, xenons i don't i don't see xenon there which is more sold in india compared to uh, isuzu but why only isuzu and which was your best build um <clears throat> you yeah, know i would love to do i would love to do zenons as well see what we looking at is uh, the way i work is very different i need to be given the freedom you know and freedom comes at a cost as well you know so the kind of ideas and bills that run in my mind they're not too simpler and not too you know um, friendly to the pocket for the normal people right that's 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 my problem i would i, I would call it as my problem you know and uh, what happens is people with nobody has given me uh, a zenon to build it my style you know it may not be expensive but i need to get the opportunity you know somebody would tell me can you build me a zenon and i would i would love to build it for them but somebody will tell that i need the freedom to work <laughs> yeah marshal so i it give me the freedom to call this give it make yeah, my zenon I mean, available as a donor bike <laughs> very soon. very soon you have to send the way clear though rest i'll take care of things <laughs> so i mean yeah we waiting for people to you know come to us and tell us you know uh, if we can work on the vehicle i would love to work on a zenon or or even the mahindra getaway once again or any other any other vehicle for that matter sometimes what happens is get that one customer who gives you that like the first issues we built was the black one that actually made us famous in india you know you've seen a lot um, of videos about the double two double two. yeah Yes. So process. after that, all I had was Isuzu's one after the other. I mean, before that, when I when I actually launched Exus, Isuzu was never in the picture. It was only Thars and Gypsies and Fortuners, and that's about it. But the moment we started the uh, the venture, uh, Isuzu's came into picture, and the first build we did made such a big noise in the market. And then we started kept doing Isuzu's after Isuzu's, and Isuzu is actually an easy vehicle to work with as compared to uh, okay. any uh, Zenon getaway for that matter. because a lot of stuff available for it in the thrash market right. you know so it makes it a lot more easier for us to uh, utilize those products and come you know maybe change it or modify it for the indian uh, market but at least it's available so we can utilize those products that's that's one of the key key reasons right i mean one if, of my if, favorite favorite builds i haven't built yet it's always been in the pipeline okay. uh, i know what i want to do but maybe in the near future yes is is it a is it a pre runner kind truck truck okay so no, uh, my 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 favorite build would be a hardcore expedition vehicle yeah you know with more utilities with more technicalities nothing more flashy nothing no outfitting stuff you know more technical uh, so it needs to be i i want to use that vehicle off the grid for at least a week 10 days so that that's the kind of setup yeah. i want to make you know from uh, it should be of the like it should be self sustaining so that's what i'm looking at that that, that would be one of my favorite yeah. builds and that's something that is in the pipeline with a lot of lot of my potential car, uh, future customers we are in chat with um so maybe so yeah. you know unless i buy back and do it up you know i think a lot of people want to go to some wilderness be there for like 2 3 days yes. Uh, yes not come back to the city or something like that and then uh, uh, everything has to be in 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 i mean the vehicle should be uh, capable of giving everything like from sanitization to anything anything like that right exactly yeah. exactly so we're looking into that we are in chats with a few people uh, similar along what you're saying that is what we trying to build for a couple of customers so but the problem is i mean most of our customers are from pan india and um, once the situation gets better then we can get the vehicles transported here currently we've got logistical issues uh, materials are coming on time and all of that so i don't want to take anyone's vehicle and you know uh, keep it for us without doing anything so yeah. but yeah so so that, you know So it could be your week, or it could be your Zainab as well. Marshal, I'm giving you help here. <laughs> hey, Vishal, I'm a little bit. Please, or yeah. Go, go ahead, go ahead, Marshal. You want to finish? Okay. Uh, I, I, I would definitely. I mean, I have. If, if uh, uh, I'm building the Zainab, uh, 
the way I want, I would want it something similar, uh, but a little more functional than just a, a trophy truck, like or a free runner. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, so that, that's something that I like to hear, you know. So basically what we do is we try and get what the customer really wants. I don't prefer customers where they say, oh, you know what, you take this picture and you build it for me. I don't do that kind of work. Uh, yeah. so I'm more function based. So uh, it's it's interesting when people tell me this is what their requirement is and then we work around the requirement. And, and that is why we have never been a brochure catalog person. You know, we've never had nice. brochures or catalogs for any kind of our bills. You yeah. tell us what your bill is. You tell me what is the functionality yeah. of whatever you want to have done and we'll work yeah. around. You know, yeah. it could be way cheaper than that. It could be way more than that. I don't know. But yeah, we can work around it, you know. Right. Hey, uh, Vishal, uh, you just told about that uh, the first issue, Isuzu that actually, you know, created a lot of noise and then, um, you know, sent, sent, sent a lot of uh, more Isuzus coming into your uh, Isuzu land. Uh, what, what was the, uh, what was the build? I mean, like, uh, can you like I, I'm not that much uh, knowing about in the four by four field about the kind of stage one, stage two, stage three. I mean, like kind of uh, they do. What what is it? The stage one. What is stage two? What 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 kind of upgrades do you do? What was the maximum uh, power that you pulled? I mean, uh, were able to juice uh, take the juice from the uh, uh, Isuzu there? Like what was it? What is Isuzu? Well, but you can actually take it to a lot higher than what we did, what you've done so far. Uh, obviously it requires a lot of technical uh, hardware changes to it as well. Um, but at that point, the black one had a lot of firsts in India. You know, the first uh, uh, differential locker to be installed, the first vehicle to be tuned to stage two, meaning your stock, your stock Isuzu is tuned to about 130 bhp. And um, uh, a stage two would somewhere come around 170, 180 bhp. You know, so basically you're looking at an ECM tune, um, and an exhaust and intake upgrade. So better breathing, better exhaust, and a better tune, you know. So right. that's that's how we work. And then depending on what more power or less power or usability factor of the customer, even the maps are actually um, designed as per the driver specifications. Mm -hmm. So it's not a one map that fits anyone. So I don't do that kind of stuff. So my tuner, who's actually from Bangalore, um, I always tell him that, you know what, I want a very driver-specific tune. Depending on his requirement and his um, usage, we will we will give him the mapping. You know, we will give him the tuning. So that's how we work. So with this particular customer, he was very clear. He wanted big, humongous tires. He wanted a whole monster truck feel to it. But with the practicality aspect. I mean, a lot of people do four-inch, five-inch lift. But they're not practical. I mean, you really can't drive them that. You can't push them, you know. So we we normally don't do anything more than two, two and a half inch lift, you know. So whatever was suitable in those parameters, we work with that. Um, we so so that particular build, I had a lot of free hand. I mean, the customer just said, "I want I want something that nobody has done. I want this is my budget, okay, and I work with it the best, mm -hmm. you know." So at well at that point. Products were still new, so the budget went high. Today, if you want a similar kind of build, it would be actually cheaper, you know, uh, you know, because because of availability of lot more products, and now it's easily readily available. Back then, I had to order a lot of stuff online and from outside and all of that, you know. So, okay. so that build was special because we had decided for the first three years we are not going to do any kind of uh, digital marketing or any kind of marketing. But that build got so famous that um, people made YouTube videos, uh, videos out of it and people shared it on uh, you know, various platforms and that uh, took us to another level. Yeah. Vishal, uh, uh, just coming back to some, uh, some basics in terms of your business thing and the journey. Now, if, let's say the, the modification, the car, car modifications, uh, four by fours, and this is not as big as how we see in the Western side of, uh, you know, right? they have these monsters and then they do, they do like crazy things, but no, it's not that big yet in, in India. Um, well, so in the journey from you, where you started off in a small garage in a very shabby place, and then now you've uh, come, you've taken your brand so so big and you've got this thing. So in the in the journey, you would have um, definitely like you and we would have done a lot of mistakes would have happened. Like your decisions could have been wrong. You've learned so many things of what to do, what not to do. Uh, where you burnt your fingers and 
and then uh, some things that went right. So what is it that you, you feel as your, the biggest mistake or the best decision that you've made in your journey through this so that anybody who's coming into this field would know something that you can learn from you? Biggest mistakes, there are plenty of them. So, so this is, and you keep learning with time, you know, every day you realize what mistake you are. So one thing I would actually tell everyone is, uh, take time off. If you've started your own business, if you are so passionate, if you've converted your passion into a business, uh, so that doesn't mean you keep your weekends you know, turn your weekends into become a workaholic over the weekend. That's what I'm trying to say. The reason being what I've learned, and especially because of uh, the pandemic and the lockdown, right? Because obviously we couldn't go to work. We were just sitting at home. You need to sit down and understand what's going on in your business. Uh, and that you can only do once you're not at work. You know, because then you tend to understand because you are biased to your decisions. You are biased to your ideas and you are biased to your passion. Okay. And you always think you're the best and you do the best and you mean the best. So meaning best for the business doesn't mean you're doing the right thing. You know, so one thing is very clear. What I've learned is take time off. I don't remember in the last four years of excess, I've actually taken any time off as such, you know, uh, yeah. So, and, and I kept thinking, you know, this is my passion. So I, Sunday, be it Sunday, I have worked all nights. We have pulled all nighters. Um, we, that is the part where I feel we didn't respect the business. So you need to differentiate between your passion and the business. That's one key factor that I see. You know, we can't be, it is okay to be emotion, emotional about your passion. It's not okay to be emotional about your business. One key factor I learned during the pandemic. You know, so it's, it's very important to take a time off, introspect, audit your business, understand where are you and did you plan it that way? You know, or was the, because, you know, when you're in the drive, when you're so passionate about your, your, your baby, you call it your baby, you know, it's, 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 you're pampering it and you're nurturing it every day. You're so into it. You don't realize what you're doing wrong. You don't realize where it is heading towards, even though you might have a plan, a very good plan when you started off, it, but you go haywire here and there. You know? So that's one important factor I've learned. Other things as a, um, the best thing that I've learned from Excess is um, accepting challenges. I mean, all these bills wouldn't have happened. All these India's first, first wouldn't have happened if we'd never accepted challenges. You know, there were so many things we had never done before, but we said, you know what? I, I personally believe everything is logical. So if you understand logic behind it, no work is difficult. You know, and nothing is impossible if you are logical enough to understand how it works. Mm. You know, so that's one, one big plus point I've learned. You know, take challenges. Having said that, learn when to say no as well. Yeah, this is very, really, really important. Very important. Very important. You know, so you can't accept big challenges, but you must know when to say no. You know, sometimes... Um, you really want to do something great. Time is not in your favor and you can't end up doing it. And what happens is instead of a happy customer who's accepted your challenge, you've got a sour customer who doesn't like you anymore. You know. And especially in our automotive industry, all you're living in is on goodwill. Your word yeah. of mouth and goodwill is what you live for. Right. So it's very important to say no when, when the time is right. You know. So that's, that's one very important factor. But yeah, Take challenges, accept challenges. It's important. You know, we wouldn't have done a lot more things if we were not saying yes to these kind of challenges, you know, and being realistic about challenges as well. You know, uh, you tell, you tell a customer, you're going to give the vehicle in two weeks. It doesn't happen in four weeks. So that's something you need to understand over time as well. We are faced with a number of times, you know, you think, you think you can manage it, but you're not got it the end of the day, you know, there are external factors, there are internal factors, there are other factors. Anything can come and push your deadline to any possible date. So accept it. You, know. you need to be hard on yourself, but not very hard as well. You know. So you, you need to convey that to the customer as well. You need to be open about it to the customer as well. So that's, that's more important. You know. Vishal, uh, Vishal that, that's what I think. I think you know, whatever you told, I don't know. I don't know. Or I don't give a damn who, who accepts it, who's watching it. But everything 
was something that hit, is hitting me because I am really, you know, uh, uh, I, I definitely have to follow what you said actually right now. Like I've uh, never about, seen things, about, him taking a break off uh, of the work or, you know, uh, keep, he, he uh, I've, I've so many examples where uh, Giri has come uh, to office uh, where he had to pick up his wife Mirabhavi and he like you know he's taken them to a place and then he's called me that he started from there uh, but then in 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 actual sense he's supposed to go and drop them back home also and okay. then, um uh, vishal one once i actually it was so much in, in work that uh, i had my wife standing outside the hospital with a two month old baby in her hand i told her you wait i just go get the car and pick you up but then in between, I got a call from my Australian dealer and I completely forgot that my, I had, my wife is waiting for me and I have to pick her up with the baby, baby she's standing on the road. I just zoom past her in the car, you know, it's like that much. And then she had to call through somebody and then I went <laughs> and uh, picked her. So this is, uh, that's why I'm telling you, what all you told me about, uh, you know, taking a break or something like that. This is something definitely I have to do, sit in retrospect of where we are heading. Are we going in the right direction? I mean, a lot of people do this, I guess. Like, as you said, we attach ourselves so much to the startup the company, the, the things that are going around us that the, we don't uh, step aside and look at it uh, at, at peace. We're just involved in the chaos all the time, um, you know, and get lost, right? Yes. So, yeah. That's, now, as you mentioned that, one key factor to that as as startups, as new businesses, is learn to pay yourself as well. <laughs> Are you okay? Great. Yeah, this is this is really important. Really, really important. Very vital. And I'll tell you, I tell you. I'll I'll take the pandemic as an example. You know, if you have paid yourself enough over the years, you will be able to survive through the pandemic. So you will still be in the market to look after your staff and suppliers and customers and everyone. But if you never paid yourself because of your passion and to build something out, you know, to, to make an umpire out of, out of your passion, uh, you're not going to exist for a long time. 100% true. 100%. So that's, that's something, you know, when you're passionate about, when you've converted your passion into a business, we don't think about these things, you know. It's, it's very vital. It's a very small thing that we miss out on. You know, we keep telling our family to sacrifice. We keep telling our family, you know, there'll be a better day tomorrow. You know, you know, baby, I'm building something. You know, you can't you see it? I mean, we, we, I've got dealers in Australia and I'm building vehicles for celebrities. And, you know, don't you see the future that we are in? Come one pandemic, four months, gone. You're gone, dude. You know, yeah. so very, it's very important very... to understand that as well. And there is something uh, that we have to also acknowledge here is, because of, uh, you know, how we um, do this, uh, um, I, I mean, uh, definitely after you acknowledged it and all, this is a stupidity that we follow, uh, most of us follow uh, the startup guys, that uh, we put, uh, and we have an entire family also sacrificed with us along for, for no reason. Isn't it? Like they go through a lot, they go through a lot of shit because of our decisions which we think that you know, we are following our dreams, it's all for the tomorrow, for the better tomorrow, for the better tomorrow. But uh, invariably we screw up there today, their yesterdays are gone. So yeah, I mean like really hard hitting. I think everybody who's going to be watching today who's having a business a startup or whatever must actually think of these things. Uh, very, very serious things about, you know, um, giving your, um, you know, yourself uh, the time um, and then, um, you know, thinking of uh, uh, where you were supposed to be, are you on the right track, paying yourself uh, regularly and all these things. And Vishal, this is uh, like, an, like a business management class that you're doing. And um, yeah. I'm, I'm a student. It's just my experience is bad. Yeah, what I've experienced. Yeah. You know, and um, I, I feel it's important to share what I've learned. You know, maybe a lot, a lot of people already know about it, but I feel if I, if I have gone through it, then I should be able to share it with people. So if there's anyone who, who is like us, who's passionate about his business, his ideas, is what he wants to do, you know, then he needs to know this. He needs to understand somebody has suffered because of the same ideas that he has. You know, so he, if, if there's a checklist for him, it will help him at each and every 
you know, instance, and he wouldn't have to go through. Although, although I mean, we also knew about it. We have heard this from a lot of people. Unless you don't experience it, yeah. you, don't, you know, you don't know. You know. But but yeah, I mean, it's always good to tell people. You know, this is this is the important fact that we have faced it, and if if it if it makes any sense to them, if they can follow it, it'll be great. It'll be actually great. You know. We in times where we don't know what might happen next month. I mean, every day there's this blast in Beirut happening, there's flights crashing in yeah. Kerala, uh, there's the, yeah. the pandemic situation. We don't know what is happening. Crazy rains everywhere. Abdul, you know, uh, there was this uh, Abdul Kalam's book. I mean, uh, or the Dream 20, India 2020 was something that was that we were studying uh, uh, when we were in school. Uh, Abdul Kalam's Dream, no, 2020, India 2020. We all never expected 2020 to be so horrible. <laughs> Right from the beginning, you know, it's, it should be wiped out uh, you know, from the calendar. I mean, like nothing is. But I, but at the same time, like how you you we started off uh, with you know just uh, this call, it is actually changing, um, uh, shaking up the system and realigning things uh, is what I am actually also looking at. My my question to Giri, you is, is it what is it horrible? Is it? Is it actually the whole 2020? Is it horrible? Is it is it bad? How do you take in this? In the context of business, are you talking about? In context of life, I'm talking about. In context of life, it is actually. Uh, uh, I would say it is actually uh, testing you whether you know uh, were you living well all these years, or, or your priorities, whatever you did, was it right or wrong? You are. It is a time where we actually have to. Now you see a lot of people can live without unnecessary spending, unnecessary things that we were doing in our life. So now if you look at things, we did not need to go out and so frequently. We did not have to eat out. We did not have to buy other things. But and at, at the same time, we also said we had to already save, th save every day when things were right. So the main thing uh, about what, what we are doing today is had we done the savings dis discipline uh, in a disciplined fashion, today would have been better. But at least now, if people realize that, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know? So that's what I'm saying, Giri. That even if our parents told us to save for for you know for uh, your rainy days, they, we never did that. <laughs> yeah, never. because because we were following our passion, you know. So we always thought, let's work hard today. The future is going to be bright, you know. But this whole situation, I feel, is a blessing in disguise for at least our generation and the coming generation. Definitely, you know? because we living in today and a very futuristic future, you yeah, know. Definitely. We're not living in the interim period, and before we realize, we're going to be old. Yeah. So it's it's something for. So I take a lot of positivity in this. Yes, it's annoying. I mean, I uh, so many people have died. It's sad and all of that. But um, this is more like a break that God has given us. You know, it's like hold on, people, hold to the people of world. You know, you guys are just running, and you guys are in a rat race. You know, take a break and. Reevaluate your lives. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. So is, uh, it's not to learn from the situation. Yeah. Right. But it, see, in, in one way, it also uh, pushes you to rethink everything that you were doing in your life, right? From yes. uh, how you were running your family to how you were running your business, what you were into, like um, just uh, when uh, we expect, see, and then and all the that, like how we do is we don't we did not save or we did not pay ourselves hoping for a better future or better day tomorrow or something like that so it happened with uh, with us in Maralingraf that we had a really good january we had a very good uh, february and uh, we thought okay everything is going well and then the Mar march is going to be definitely kick ass and then that's that's how it's going to be 2020 is going to be like fantastic and then march uh, the janata curfew started and we had to literally abandon our, our factory. Like we thought we'll come back after Janta Garpu, a day or two later. Mm -hmm. But then all the tools were running. Marshall, if you remember, everything was running out. We just shut our factory and for two months we couldn't open the factory here in Bangalore. And every yeah. plan, everything went. I mean, like luckily, during the time we thought of a lot of these things, like we will get into the, we have to adapt to the changes. We did the UV sterilization stuff, and that, and that actually kept us alive. 
and now we are actually uh, you know looking at things differently and we are um, and like how we talked about the exhaust market is opened up people are ready to come out um, though there is scare uh, things are opening up uh, that's that's one good thing at least that everybody is not locked themselves up for a longer time so sure. yeah but definitely this covid has changed our uh, um, way of looking at things in every aspect isn't it in every aspect in every yes yeah that's that's, that's uh, yeah. awesome so great so um, mushal i mean there is still loads and loads of things that uh, i want to ask and i know this is not the right time um, there is few more things that we want to frame and then talk to you uh, regarding this thing and uh, once the pandemic gets over uh, it's been a long wish for me and marshall to actually drop into exus overland we are, we were thinking that as you said no, we'll take a break and i i had told marshall marshall get on let's get it started and go many <laughs> right. december by november went by uh, we thought of uh, going uh, hitting uh, run of kutch in uh, in the winter uh we'll drive there we'll zoom pass by we'll probably spend a day or two at excess overland and so many times we we okay okay not this not this time maybe okay another december maybe oh december went by okay maybe in january somewhere maybe okay this time i think uh, i think do it never happen uh, bob mc time we had almost uh, uh, bob mc uh, uh, rider manias were happening somewhere there uh, i think in 2018 or something no? Uh, yeah, Rajasthan. Jaipur. Yeah, Jaipur, yeah. Rajasthan. We thought we would, you know, drive by uh, till uh, excess overland in Mysore, and then we'll uh, keep us in on there, and then take our bikes and ride there, and then come back, and then uh, all those plans all were done. Then, Vishal, we want we badly wanted to come to Excess Overland, meet you, uh, look at what you're doing, amazing work, and uh, so you know, we we're also planning actually, even during this time, we were planning that. you know we are building some things for the uh, 4x4s i thought okay we'll start off with excess overland as a partner I, already uh, there with us so yeah i all these things sh- shall happen in this year or the or, or very soon and um, i i mean working working with you uh, with excess overland uh, was really fantastic i mean your your work ethics is something really we admire um actually is actually there's a lot of things common between what you how you started how we started how you how you run your business how we run our business where where things what mistakes you have done and what mistakes we have done <laughs> there are a lot of uh, similarities in uh, those things and uh, but then but then that's the wonderful thing your your brand um, is really uh, amazing a lot of people like how you said it's all about the goodwill and the, and the word of mouth and stuff like that so more power to excess overland and more power to vishal thank you, um, thank you, you know, sir <laughs> we look forward to actually send more send more send more decals i want more decals there are a lot of people who are behind this but then this is the only one that is left with me right now so <laughs> i'm like not giving it away and I've kept it for my memory and, uh, my association with I excess overland i need to get more printed back i have also really got a stickers now only probably got only four five of them left so yeah. once my printer is not yet operational so once he is operational again okay. then i'll like it could also in a similar way for us yeah yeah send me send me your logo we'll get it done i'll do that as a cool man so uh, uh, there's still more a lot more i think uh, maybe uh, maybe snack next time again uh, with uh, with a different topic i would want to uh, talk to you uh, we would want to discuss a lot of things in detail um, later and uh, thanks for your time right now i think it's really almost an hour now we have been uh, discussing and uh, thank, you. thank you so much yeah uh, i just want to uh, end with uh, your opinion if i have to buy uh, an old uh, 4x4 like a, a mm 540 or a 550 for farm use what would be your choice i want to have you hear this and then end this and this conversation on that if you want something that's more practical the 550 Okay. But if you want to actually abuse it uh, in your farm, then go for the 540 because 540 um, had leaves in front. You can actually abuse it quite a bit. It's not an independent suspension in front like the 550. Right. So I would say go for the 540. That's better. Or if you can in South India, you can buy the the R D I. The D I motor is quite powerful. You know. From the so 2001s, 2002s. 
you can uh, i think get them i think i'm not i'm not too sure when they launch the di but that's a better motor right. you know so go for it great sir thank you so much so great uh, okay. thank you uh, viewers uh, just subscribe to this channel and you have all your questions put it on the comments we'll have uh, uh, vishal uh, uh, you know at least we'll tell them or he will directly answer them for you any questions about uh, 4x4 modifications and and making your cars or isuzus into monsters um, this is a man in india to go to um, so he does uh, work from uh, i mean he he has clients across india uh, pan india so so uh, you should actually check out his page uh, excess overland we put you we'll put the links there and uh, please visit them um, and um, after this pandemic i think you guys have to get your monsters out and uh, we'll have uh, we'll have this together a lot of things so we want to work together vishal uh, we'll let you know after this uh, thing so good luck good luck good luck to excess overland good luck to vishal good luck to Bye. Thanks a lot, and same to you guys with all the new work that you've all the product that you're doing for COVID and pandemic, the UV products that you've come out with amazing products. Uh, good luck with all of that, yeah. you know, and the new R and Ds that you guys are carrying on that I know of. A few of them I know about, a lot of them I don't know. We'll we'll chat about that very soon, and we'll get to know from you Great. on your uh, social media pages and all that. Good. So good luck to you guys as well. Thank you, thank, thank you, thank you. Stay safe, man. Stay safe. You too, man. You too. Stay safe, and take care. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Good night. Bye.